Hey everybody, welcome to Tropical Shores uh, live stream lessons. Glad to have you here. Uh, it's 5 p.m. in uh, where I'm at in uh, Central Time. And as always, I have my daughter Jamie on the other end of the line, and she is uh, in North Hi Carolina. Hi everyone. So, um, how's things out there? You know, beautiful as always. Thank you for asking. Had mm. a really nice day. The weather has been mild. Looking up for this week. Um, I booked a gig. What? I know. I have not played a gig since last June. I actually played a gig in June, which was, looking back, I was I was a bit, I, I didn't wear a mask or anything, so I was, uh, looking back, I probably would have done things different, but I uh, booked a gig at one of the best breweries in Charlotte uh, on Wednesday for their Caribbean night, so oh, that's hopefully fantastic. the weather holds up. Oh, we're all looking forward to getting back to whatever normal we're going to get back to, so. Um, yeah. We have made some adjustments in our in our uh, over the past two months. We made some adjustments in our presentation, meaning uh, different sound techniques, different mics, different placements, and we're we were struggling. And hopefully, it's a little bit better. Uh, but we want you to know that if, if it goes really bad and it's not working, we've decided that we may be doing a uh, tape the show so we can do it in, in a studio sense, and then and then put it up, uh, let it live stream. But it won't really be live. That helps us. Um, do the presentation uh, with better audio and stuff, but we're hoping that this has fixed it. We've, we've learned a couple things about this new program, so I, I know you guys are very patient with us, and we appreciate that, and I know you're just here for the pan playing, so, but we hope that this will this will go better. Uh, let's say hi to Marcia Curtis. She's here. Linda Bodie is here from West Virginia, who's a fine player. Gerald, good to see you. Jamie's, oh wait, that's you. Okay, <laughs> well, uh, this week on tap is an original called Banana Funk. And it's a song I wrote in about 2006. I've recently revamped it a little bit and did a track to it. It's a, a song I hope you'll enjoy. It's uh, in the key of D minor. It's got one flat in the key signature. And for those of you who remember, that's F minor or D, uh, sorry, F major and D minor. So uh, also I wanted to tell you that uh, we are, uh, I want to remind you, if you haven't, subscribe and hit the little bell so that you get the notifications. Uh, in case we decide anything's going to go differently. Also, uh, this week we're donating to uh, Operation Smile, which is a group that uh, uh, takes medical personnel to third world, third world countries and they uh, work on their cleft palates and things like that, issues that these kids have. And it's a wonderful organization. We're going to donate to them this week and hopefully you can help us out a little bit. And if you haven't done so, go to bradshoresmusic.com, get the music that's on the Steel Drum page, download it, and uh, follow along with us. We have the lead sheet and a harmony sheet and a theory sheet. So uh, let's, I'm going to play through just uh, uh, one time through this. I want you to know a couple things about this song. There's a couple of times when uh, there is a solo section and uh, there's also what we call a unison part, which means everybody plays the same part. And I will, I will say something when we get there. We're going to do some things with that. But first, let's just play through it once. This is Banana Funk by yours truly. Oh, I guess I got to do that.
solo section. So there's a couple challenges in this song. And Jamie, what are some of the challenges that you can see in this song? Unmuting yourself when you're supposed to talk. Well, and, there's that. Um, that was on the news. I think that was on CBS Sunday morning. That was a whole, oh, I know what it was, the Golden Globe. No, sorry, one of the awards show. One of the uh, actors was accepting an award. Sorry, it's tangent. I know, but it's important. One of the actors uh, did his whole thank you speech on silent. <laughs> Uh, and excuse me, you're not. You know, where do you, where do you think I get the tangents from? The the, the habit. I'm not a <laughs> just so you, just saying, lovingly love you. Uh, the rhythm is challenging if you don't know this piece, and a lot of you won't because it's a Brad Shores original. Uh, and then the roadmap is kind of confusing if you're not used to looking at the uh, the exits, the repeats, the uh, you know. There's some dynamic changes that you should know. So it's it's a, it's an involved piece for sure. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, I want to say a couple things that uh, uh, Michael and Kathy are on. And uh, good to see you guys. And, and thank you for telling us how we're sounding because we don't know. We have no idea. But we're glad to see that because we've worked really hard on this. Well, pretty hard. Uh, and then uh, thank you, Gerald, for your compliment on the solo. What I want to tell you about the solo section is, if you're looking at the music, it's major uh, 46. And the reason that you know it's a solo section, it's on the second page, however, uh, that it just has chord changes. And what you can do during that section is you can just play the melody again. It's set up that way. So uh, that's one thing. But for now, we need to know what Bobble Brad has in store for us today. Bobble Brad is talking about the word syncopation. Jamie, what's the best, what do you, what's the way you describe syncopation? Syncopation or notes, uh, when I'm teaching, again, I always refer to my beginners uh, because that's a big part of my career and my job right now is teaching beginners. So when I'm teaching littler ones to count, it, I always tell them it's the notes that are not numbers. So as I'm teaching them to count one and two and three and four, and eventually I'll get them to do something like and, 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 and I'll let them feel the up or the and beats. That's my best uh, version for a beginner musician. I like that. Uh, that's great. Anything that's not on the beat, which you call a number, I also call those uh, chips, 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 hot dog, hot dog. Anything that's not a chip or a hot, anything that's a dog is probably off the beat. Dog, hot, dog. Okay. All right. It's all food for me. I'm sorry. I know that. It, all, it works. <laughs> uh, it's so, true. I did learn that way. Syncopation is, is really intricate. It's an integral, integral part of... Um, uh, this music, especially because this has a lot of syncopation. For instance, this lick that goes that lick right there in major 44 on your lead sheet is very syncopated, and uh, it's on the second page. So, lots of syncopation here. Also, the blues scale, which is on the theory sheet, is actually in this blue. It's actually inside this song. If you go to the uh, once again the second page of the song. Uh, major 41, it actually is the blues scale. It's D, F, G, A flat, G, F. It's a very good part of the uh, song. I mean, it's a very good part of the blues scale. D, F, G, A flat, G, like that. D, F, G, A flat, G, F. Now, if you want to go up the whole blues scale, it'd be D, F, G, A flat, and then A, and then C and D. Another challenging thing about this, Jamie, and I'll ask you to play yours too, is that these little little bitty notes here, these little high uh, C and D, they're not really great notes on any pan, but on mine they're okay. So it's a challenge because I never actually used to play them because I could never find the darn things. But on this song, it mm -hmm. actually calls for those. And uh, I want to encourage people, if you are using that high C and D, you have to play harder. And uh, well, how do your C and D sound? Pretty good. And they have, uh, the D is, the D note's a little flat, but um, they also have a sweet spot. All the notes on a pan have a sweet spot. So finding the ones um, on the smaller ones, or uh, another thing you can do is double. Play the lower octave with it. That's what right. I normally do. Right, that's a, that's a good tip. It does make it sound more full. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe is on, and thank you for, for the compliment. Uh, he's asking, is there any system that you use to make it look so easy? <clears throat> And I always say this, and I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> when I see Rory Michael, uh, the golfer, Rory, Mac, I can't remember his last name, I should, McElroy. when he hit, huh, McElroy, yeah, when he hits those, uh, he hits off the tee and, and drops it, you know, within uh, 
just in great spots. I go, how does he make it? His swing is so easy. It's so effortless. He does it every time. Guess what that guy does all day? He plays golf. So, Joe, I would, I would remind you that I do this for a living. And first of all, I'm, just, I'm really good. And then also, I'm, of course, I'm kidding. But I am pretty good. <laughs> He's got a good laugh for Miss Congeniality. Over here. Um, I play at school. I teach kids. I've been playing for 30 years. And you do have to know, you do have to know, uh, like Rory, he has to know what club to hit. I, I have to know what scale I can start with. That's a, that's a beginning part. I know that that's the G blue scale, or sorry, D. And I'm familiar with it. I can do it fast and slow and uh, two octaves. Uh, of course, I'll hold the goober now. do it automatically because of motor memory. Now this is the D blues, this is the D scale, sorry, D minor scale, uh, D minor arpeggio. I can play that faster than I can even think about it. It's like typing. I knew a lady who could type like a hundred words a minute. And how do they even do that? Well, she does it every day. It's not a huge deal for her. And I'm not, I'm not trying to make it sound simple, but the best thing I can tell you is play. And somebody said to, um, uh, how do you get better playing golf? You play golf. And, and you take a few lessons. Uh, let's see. I have one more thing that yeah. I do with my students. Um, actually, right now, we're working in a blues unit. I'm teaching them the, uh, the B-flat blues scale. We're learning a 12-bar blues form. And they're learning how to play C jam blues because it's two notes. And then I'm teaching them to improvise. It's some things that I do. And this may be something that we end up offering either – as a live at five special, or maybe if um, you know you you email dad or myself to say, hey, I like a Zoom a special Zoom session with you. Something I do with them is I play something, then they repeat it. So part of improvising can be playing by ear. So um, that being said, listen, find um, some great blues artists that um, you know of, or maybe you can ask us if you're not sure, or just Google a great blues artist and they'll come up and listen and play along. Um, that can sometimes be tough because maybe you don't know exactly what key they're in, but just by purely listening, you'll get ideas. And then something like playing back and forth with somebody is always is always more fun to um, beyond knowing the scale and doing you know the work that way. Um, so that may be something we could do a special on. Maybe um, yeah. everybody bring their can. Mm -hmm. uh, dad plays, we play. Dad plays, we play. Because then when the students improvise after that, they automatically have ideas, uh, licks as we call them, and, and they're able to incorporate that into the notes that they um, have solidified in the scale. And that's great, great stuff there. We call that learning the jazz language or the improv language. Like in this particular key, the D minor. <laughs> syncopation. I'm not just using straight licks. I'm using uh, uh, straight uh, eighths and quarters. I'm using syncopation. Now, the, the, where this comes, where, where, the, where this sounds good is where you use a lick and then you use it again in a different way. That's where I think the beauty of it comes in is where you, you play the same lick. finish the phrase a little bit. So I, it's like you're saying, hey, how are you today? Have you been sleeping long? Uh, you look like you should probably wash your hair. So I went up and I went down. So let's visit the board cam. Uh, first, yes, Marsha, it does come with years of playing. And uh, it does come with experimentation on it. I mean, I've had plenty of clams, which are horrible notes, that I never want to play again. But over time, you just kind of go, I'm not going to play that note. And last time I played that note during this solo, it was horrible. So you, by the process of elimination, you start, you stop making those kinds of mistakes. Now, do we keep making mistakes like that? Yes, but thank you. Uh, I want to say hi to uh, Ian from Brazil. That's wonderful. Wonderful to have you here. Yeah, um, hello, welcome. And so let's go to the board cam. 
And I have uh, one of the licks that I like to use is this one right here. It's D F A C E. Now you notice I just have it like this. Now I'm going to go back to my my hands for a minute. And uh, here is the lick now, D F A C E. Here's fast. Here's slow. Here's slower. I like that lick because it, it fills time back to the board now. I might play this lick and then answer it with this coming down, which is actually the blues scale coming down. You see the notes. When you see those notes in this order, that's the blues scale in D. How do I know that? I've, I've seen it before. So back to the hands, I'm going to do. And then. Here I go again. And then A flat. Here's a faster version. So it's not that I automatically know those, those licks. I, I kind of have an idea of what will probably work because I know that D9 will sound really good, followed by blues scale coming down. So that's that's one of those licks that I've actually worked on and practiced. I want to share it with you. So you could actually you could actually do this uh, several times. Now I've got the whole sentence. I'm going to do it slow. Here's the D9 chord. A flat coming down. Something like that. So when I'm playing this beat, one, two, three, four.
sometimes in gig heavy gig season stuff so I'll just in my car I just leave it in the car and go but yeah not this time yeah uh, Jamie Linda Bodie says that she always asks for a good beer so, oh I know I was afraid I should ask that's something I'm for all the years I've been doing this I still am not super comfortable as like if I can if I feel like the person or the you know event is pretty chill I'll be like hey do you mind if I grab dinner but for some reason, that's just a me thing. Uh, but you should, you can definitely negotiate. Will you be, uh, will you get to eat? Um, you know, how many breaks will you take? Oh my gosh, I could, I could yeah. take tip forever. But yes, definitely, I'll probably be like, hey, can I get a beer before I start? Yeah, some of that they, they often, break. they often will ask you. They'll ask you, can I get you anything? And you go, yes. How about my check? Could I have the check? Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, things like that, uh, you know, try to make the gig as. Uh, surprise free as you can. Have everything on the on the um, uh, contract and expectations. Where do I park? Should I wear something, you know, is it a formal? We used to have formal tropical or, you know, even more shirt, uh, white shirts, tuck shirts. We've done, we've done it all, so. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Marcy said that we had, we had somebody show up with a new case. So excited, no pan. Oh, that's a nice one, <gasps> they showed up and had no pan. <gasps> Uh, I have full, full be, disclosure. It made the, me sweat just a little. <laughs> <laughs> when the kids were little, I drove off to my job where I taught, and I and I was they were my I was their ride. And I I drove. I used to go down and get coffee, come back and get them. I forgot to go get them. I was going. <laughs> it's a nice. This is a nice drive today. There's it's fairly quiet. In the, oh gosh. So I had to drive back to and get them. So <laughs> with that being said, um, well I'm going to look at the theory sheet for just a minute because uh, I want to draw your attention to the D minor scale here. I want you to understand that the D minor scale is not the same as the D minor scale. It's very similar. The D scale is this. D, E, F, G, A, B e flat, C, D. It's also the same as the F major scale starting on D, if you, if you know that one better. Here's the D blues scale. D, F, G, A flat or G sharp, A, C, D. Now, I like to use the E. It's not in the blues scale, but I like that D minor 9. I like to embellish it with an E flat. Now, I'm just making up rhythms. I'm trying to do it in a, in a, in a, a way that syncopation is used. Okay, now, Jamie, can you talk about the chord, uh, the first inversion of a D minor chord? What would that be look like to you? Yes, so remember chords are spelled with the the tonic as the name, so D minor would be B, F, and A. And if you're practicing your chords along uh, with the track or trying to get your, you know, your bearings, start there. But as you're learning to use the chords, you can invert them, meaning the F of the D, F, and A will be the bottom of the chord. So I'm going to play F and then a, and then a higher note, D. Sounds different than... And it just, again, fills out the harmony and helps you practice using those notes because all the notes in the chord are also in the scales. So uh, then you've got the, the next G minor, instead of the G being the lowest note, uh, then you'd make the B flat the note, the, the lowest note. Uh, and it just helps you make a different sound without having to try that hard. I always tell people it's what I, what normally what I'm doing actually isn't that technically challenging, um, but it's it, so it's great because you can you can do simple things but sound really good as long as you're playing the right notes. <laughs> That's why I tell my band kids. Yeah, it's like. Uh, yeah, it's not that hard. Just play the right notes. It's just very simple. <laughs> Hit the ball straight. Hit it straight, and that, you'll be fine. The live at five, play the right notes. Thank you. Thank you. Mallet drop, ball. drop the mallet. Uh, <laughs> Linda said, "You get a check." She's asking, "You get a check?" Then <laughs> um, no, also is, is also good. Uh, I also wanted to say about that. I had a couple football players in my steel drum class at Bethel, and they didn't. They knew nothing about music, and so we we even got so deep in this class, we started talking about music theory. Did a lot of remote stuff or uh, remote uh, Zoom meetings because we were out of school quite a bit because of the virus. So I told him, look, in, in verses like this, here's your here's your chord DFA. That's root position. That's like the, the uh, when you set up in the backfield, you have the uh, I formation or, or T bone or wishbone. 
And they, then their eyes lit up because they were like, well, that's something we recognize. They said, okay, now we're going to take the halfback and we're putting him over here. And so we have the same three players, but they're stacked up in a different formation. That's all inversion is. It's just mm. stacking them. Man, they love that. They wrote home about that, how great an idea that was. Uh, slow day at Bethel. That's amazing. Okay, now at the end of the, of the fourth line of the, uh, of the theory, I've written out some, some licks that, you know, you could probably use. These are little sentences or little, little um, snippets of things you can play. Now, the first one is... And if you uh, see that on, on the sheet, it would be major 17. And that that's, uses a D minor chord in a weird uh, inversion. Okay, next one is... Same sort of deal, different notes. It's the same rhythmic idea. It's the same. The next one is one. One. These are things you can play as a solo, uh, solo in, during uh, during the time that you're doing these solos. Uh, here's major 19. One. And then the last one is A starts on A flat. Oops, I'll play it again. One. So I might even use a couple of these when I do the solo, so that you can hear how I how I utilize those during the, the solo time. Now, again, on the music, there is a solo section. You can either try to improvise there, or you can just play the melody, the a, what we call the A section, during that time. That's perfectly fine. So uh, let's see if there's any questions. Yes, Marcia, checklists are good. Uh, let me look over here again. We want to remind you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, that we're donating to Operation Smile. And just looking to do over my checklist. I'm looking over my checklist. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Jamie, did you have anything to add before we do a play along? No. Except I I didn't the it's I didn't remember this tune because Dad told me earlier in the afternoon when we were doing our uh, our checklist of things, we were practicing and he said yeah we played this year your senior year we used to have something called interim which was basically a week off of school to do to try something i guess i don't even know what the purpose was uh, but uh, uh dad always put on a steel drum week and so i chose that one for my senior year and we played this tune and the more i played it the more i was like oh yeah it was crazy how like I didn't, hadn't thought it's been 15 years since I graduated high school, Dad. Maybe oh, can you handle that? <laughs> yeah. So, so it's a it's a really cool piece that we didn't we help you write this, or did, did had you already written it? I we, one of the things of interim is that I get these kids for a week. Uh, and like one teacher would have like knitting. I think you took that one once, Jamie. It was a week of whatever that teacher's mm -hmm. hobby was. Kids could sign up for it. There was no rule. Run, run, there was no rhyme or reason to it. So I had have kids that, well, Jamie had played the steel drum, but we'd have kids in there that had never played a musical instrument in their life. So the challenge was, mm -hmm. we always wrote all the songs inside there. And in, in that class, one of the rules was, we're just gonna write them as they go, because teaching kids to read music and play the pan just wasn't working. So what I would do is i go, hey, Johnny, play this. And that's called learning by rote. You just teach them, like, Here, here's my hands, watch my hands, play this. Write it down on a napkin, mm -hmm. however you can remember it. This was one of those songs. So That's right. uh, you just never know. Uh, I, I dug this out in my steel drum band of Bethel's playing this right now. So I thought, you know, I can make a track to this. It's a really nice use of the blues mm -hmm. scale practice. So uh, that's, that's how that happened. They asked me what the, the, what, the uh, what it means. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I know. The, the naming rights to your songs, that's what we should do. raise money for is bid to name the songs. <laughs> because I love you, but I mean, come on. Well, Bandana, it's just... Bananas after a few days, bananas smell kind of funky. So that that's what I told the kids at Bethel. They bought it. So, all right, all right. We're going to do the play along all now. Right, go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the song all the way through the solo section, and then I'm going to go back to. Uh, this song is very long. Uh, a lot of people tell me that my songs are too short, so this one's pretty long. We're not going to be able to do the whole thing. I'm going to go through the solo section, and I'm going to stop. And remember, I'm going to play one of those licks. Uh, or a couple of those licks on the theory page, just so you can see it. The problem is I dropped that sheet, so that's an issue. All right, but uh, one more check on things. Checking on the sound. Uh, can you get a, um, we have a can you get a copy of the solo suggestions? I don't remember seeing the download. Uh, I think Marsha, I think I download, I uh, uploaded that um, recently, like 
this morning. So check again. Uh, if it isn't there, I'll email it to you. Yeah, there's some there's some uh, some good ideas on there. She's saying that that wasn't on that. I don't think the theory sheet was in the first batch. Um, I think yeah. I probably forgot to upload it. It's, it happens. So uh, check it out. If it isn't in there, let me know. Email me at Brad at Tropical Shores. I'll hook you up with it. All right, here we go. Oh, that's me. sound great so uh, again I want to make sure that this sounds good uh, I want to make sure the sound was good uh, and it seems like it is and I think we found our bugaboo it was a couple of boxes that we didn't know were supposed to be checked so uh, anything else Jamie for the good of the order 
No, I like this tune. It's good. Practice the blues scale and you'll sound great. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. We want to thank everybody for stopping by. And we, again, want to uh, uh, invite you to download the tracks and leave us a small donation if you can. That will really help us. We'll, we'll do some donating to Operation Smile. And we're continuing to upgrade our system here. Obviously, we have, we've bought some things, bought a brand new mic. It, it was a pretty expensive mic. It's the biggest mic I've ever bought. And so uh, I wanted to, uh, if you have questions and you want to ask offline, brad at tropicalshores.net or shoresjr, that's Shores Jr. Isn't that cool how that works out? Shores Jr. like Junior Shores. Junior Shores. Like you're the junior. Of, okay. Hi. Shoresjr at gmail.com. If you have questions for us, that would be terrific. We'd love to help you. Once again, I want to uh, thank my producer, Miss uh, Congeniality, who has uh, really learned this program well, and we've had to... Um, just have some bumps and bruises, but uh, we're doing things like we're making some progress. I want to thank you guys for stopping by, and we are, we'll be back again in two weeks. Uh, that would be the uh, 21st, if I am a good mathematician. That's uh, March 21st. Be at uh, 5 o'clock Central Time here at uh, Steel Drum Central. We'll see you guys. Jamie, thank you for your help, as always. Thanks, Dad. All Bye, right. everybody. All right. See you.